Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. In this video, what I'm gonna be doing is showing you how to install Arch Linux using only two commands. Now this is gonna be with the help of the ArchFi or ArchFast installer script. Now the ArchFi script is definitely one of the best scripts out there. It's worked for me every single time flawlessly. And I did recently put out a tweet mentioning it. And when I did that, I realized I have no content on this channel about it. So what I'm gonna do is go through all the steps of everything you need to know and do a complete Arch Linux install. And I'm gonna be doing it on this little mini PC here. So we are going to be doing it on actual physical hardware. Now, if you are interested in checking out this device, I will have a link in the description. I did a full video review of it. So go ahead and check that out. But with that said, leading into this video, all you need to do is go onto the Arch website and burn the ISO to a USB drive, plug it in, boot into that disk image, and let's go ahead and install it. All right, so we are booted into our live disk image of Arch. And what you're gonna to need to actually run this script is an internet connection so you can download it. Now, if you go ahead and plug your system with an ethernet cable, generally you're gonna have no problems at all if you need to connect to Wi-Fi. I'm not gonna get into that right now, but if you head over to the link in the description, there'll be more details on how to do that. Now, if you do want to check to see if you have an internet connection before we proceed, it's as simple as typing in ping and then a URL of your choice. So I'm gonna do techhut.tv and see if I have a connection, which as you can see, I do. If I hit control C, it will go ahead and end that. So now that we know we have an internet connection, what we're gonna do is actually download this script. And to do this, we're just gonna use a curl L command, and then it, this is hosted at SourceForge. And then we do the little greater than symbol in ArchFi. Go ahead and hit enter. It's a very small script, so it should not take too long at all. You can see it's already downloaded. So now just to launch this script, you're gonna want to type in sh archfi and then hit enter and this is the main menu of the script the script is basically going to walk you through all the steps that you would normally need to do by typing in commands except this is going to be in a graphical user interface and it's just going to execute the commands for you if you do actually follow along on the arch wiki installation guide for example you can see that basically everything is actually in order and this is a proper Arch install. So the very first thing we're gonna do is select our language, and to do that, we're just gonna hit enter, and then I am a English speaker, so we're gonna go over to English and hit enter. Next, we're gonna set our keyboard layout. There are quite a few choices here, so I'm gonna go all the way down to US. There it is, so I'm gonna select US, hit enter, and every once in a while, you may see this. Whenever you see this screen, it's just confirming what it has done. So we're gonna hit any key to continue. I'll just hit enter. Now you can see as I am moving through this guide, it's automatically selecting the next option that we need to go ahead and do. It did skip editor. This is an optional step. The default is nano, but if you're used to using Vim, for example, you could go ahead and select that. But personally for me, nano is completely fine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep nano selected hit continue, and now we are gonna go ahead and mess around with our disk partitions. So from here, go ahead and hit enter, and you have a couple different options here. If you have an EIF system or a motherboard that supports it, I highly suggest going with the first option. Alternatively, you could just go with plain GDP or plain DOS, but for this video, we're gonna select this first option here. And then from here, it will show you all of the drives on your machine. I have SDA and SDB. SDA is my main SSD on the machine that we're gonna be installing Arch on, and this SDB is the flash drive with the live disk image on it. So for this, I'm gonna go ahead and select my main drive, hit enter, and then here we have our first warning. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you have everything that is already on that drive backed up that's important, because we are gonna be formatting and partitioning drives, so any data on that drive is gonna be deleted. So for this, I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes to continue, and it's gonna go ahead and give us the same warning again. I'm gonna go ahead and type in yes and hit enter, and then it's gonna go through the procedure of creating the partitions we're gonna need, including EFI, swap, and root. So from here, I'm just gonna press a key to continue. And now before we go back and we go to the next step, we're gonna go ahead and check something real quick. If we go down to edit partitions, CF disk, hit enter, select our main drive that we just partitioned out. Here is where we can take a quick note of what partitions actually belong to what. So here, SDA1 is our boot, SDA2 is our Linux swap, and then SDA3 is our Linux file system. We're gonna to need to know this for the next step, so just keep a note of that. You can write it down if you'll forget, but this is important because depending on what option you selected, this may be different for you. 
So at the bottom we can see that quit is already selected. So if I just hit enter, it should take me out. And then I can hit the over keys, the over arrow keys to select back. And now I'm gonna go ahead and select my partitions and install. So go ahead and hit enter there. And now you can see it's asking me to select my boot device. Now that's the EFI partition, which is SDA1. The swap device we already know is SDA2 and the root is SDA3. Now it didn't create a separate partition for home, so for this option we're gonna go ahead and select on none. And then here we can kind of confirm to make sure that this is everything we want. Let's go ahead and select yes because it looks good to me. And now we have our format and mount menu. So from here we're gonna select the first option which is format devices. It's gonna give you the warning again, everything's gonna be erased. We're gonna select yes. Now, being that I selected EFI, the only option I have, well, the only option I should select here is FAT32. So this is what the file system is gonna be for our boot drive. Let's go ahead and select that. So went ahead and set that up, press any key to continue. The only option for swap is swap, so let's hit enter there. Continue out of there. And now this is where you can actually have a little bit of freedom here. You could go ahead and select your preferred file system. I'd either go with BetterFS or EXT4. Personally, I prefer EXT4. It's what I'm most familiar with and it works perfectly fine for me. So EXT4 it is. So now that we're done with that, let's press any key to continue. And now we're gonna go ahead and mount this. So go ahead and select the mount install or config option. So here you could kind of see what it did. It went ahead and mounted those partitions that we created and it made some directories that we're gonna need. This is all stuff that you would have had to manually go in and type commands to do, just saving us a whole bunch of time. Unless if you're a really fast typer, I am not, so it saved me a whole bunch of time. So let's go ahead and press any key to continue. And now we are in the install menu. The first thing you could do if you would like to is edit the mirror list. Uh, if I go ahead and go over there, you can see what it is currently set up as. You could change that if you'd like to, but it is good enough for me, so I'm gonna hit Control X. And now from here, I'm going to actually install Arch, selecting this option right here, hit Enter. And our first option when installing Arch is to select our Linux kernel. You go with either Linux, Linux LTS. I'm pretty sure at, as of recording this video, just Linux will install 5.11, LTS is 5.10. For this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and go Linux so I have the latest kernel. Well, the latest kernel that they recommend, you could also go hardened or zen, but Linux is fine for me. Next, we're gonna select our firmwares. I highly suggest you make sure that's selected. Uh, we're gonna see a lot more options like this to go ahead and select things. If you hit the space bar, you can see that it deselected it, but I want to go ahead and keep that selected and then hit enter. So now we have our file system. For me, DOS FS tools is gonna to be perfectly fine. You also have your better FS stuff. You have LVM and a few others, but for my installation, and to make this the easiest on me, I'm just gonna go ahead and select the default. And now you can see that it is actually downloading and going through the installation of Arch Linux. All right, so once it is completely done installing the system, we have, again, press any key to continue. Let's go ahead and do that, and then the next option is to configure Arch Linux. Now Arch is technically installed on the system, but we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do this so we can make it bootable and make sure everything is set up properly. So the first thing you're gonna do is set a computer name. You could call it Arch Linux, but I'm actually gonna call this one Media Server because I'm gonna be using this in a uh, video that's coming up pretty soon. Actually, just Media will be fine for now. So we're gonna hit OK. Now for me, the keyboard layout and font by default should be okay. As you can see, US is already selected, so those options are gonna be okay. Uh, set time, we're gonna go ahead and go in there, and I am in Los Angeles. Well, not in Los Angeles, I'm in the time zone of Los Angeles. Thankfully, I'm not in Los Angeles. So we're gonna go to United States Pacific, which is the Los Angeles time zone. For the hardware clock, let's select UTC, wait for that to finish, continue. And now we're gonna go ahead and set our root password. Now you could set this to whatever you want. It's not gonna show that I'm typing anything, but I promise I am. Uh, once you type it in, hit enter, and you're gonna to want to type it again, just to make sure you didn't screw up. Hit enter, and you can see my password was updated successfully. So let's hit enter to continue. And now what we're gonna do is generate the FS tab file, or as I would have repeatedly say a couple months ago, the F stab file. So we're gonna generate that. And we're gonna go with our first option, which is the UUID, hit enter. And now it has been generated. So press any key to continue. 
Now it did skip a couple options. You could go ahead and edit this if you'd like to. You could actually go in and edit your FSTAB file. If you do have other drives and other disks plugged in that you do want it to automatically mount to your system, for example. And I do have a separate tutorial on how to do that. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and jump into our bootloader settings. So from here, we're gonna hit enter. And for this, we're gonna go with good old grub. So hit enter there, and we're gonna go ahead and install grub. So once grub has completely installed, we're gonna press any key to continue. And now we're gonna go ahead and install our EIF boot manager. You can see it's required for EIF computers. So let's go ahead and hit yes. It's done, so we're gonna go ahead and press any key to continue. And you can see right there, it went ahead and enabled, well, it generated the grub configuration file. So now we're gonna press any key to continue. So now that we've done that, we could actually go ahead and install our bootloader. If you want to, you go ahead and edit grub here. Here's where you can like do a grub timeout, for example, if you want to, to completely skip the grub bootloader. But for now, we're gonna go ahead, control X and get out of here. So I didn't do any edits, so I'm gonna hit no on this and then install grub. So hit enter, and then we're gonna go ahead and install this on our primary hard drive that we've installed the system on. Go ahead and select EFI, and now it's gonna go ahead and install that. So now we can hit enter to continue, and now grub is installed. So now let's go ahead and go back. And now what we're gonna do is actually go ahead and go to archdi, which is gonna be another script that will allow us to install a lot more things to actually be able to get into our system, such as the Xorg packages and a actual desktop environment. So let's hit enter here. And then you can see this says what I just said. It's a second script, which will help you install a full workstation. We're gonna go ahead and hit yes here, and it's gonna go ahead and grab that. So from here, we're gonna do install and run archdi. The developer recommends SourceForge, so let's just go ahead and go with that. And we can see it working. And now just like before, we're gonna go ahead and go through this script just as it's laid out. So we're gonna start with updates and we're gonna select the first install Pac-Man Contribute. Yes, and it's gonna go ahead and download install that. There we go. So now we can install an AUR helper. Um, generally, I prefer PAMAC, but it's not an option here. Uh, Yay is great for now. So we're gonna go ahead and install Yay and then select yes. And let's go ahead and do the default selection of all of these packages. Hit enter for yes, and then it's gonna go ahead, download and install, yay. All right, so I've selected proceed with installation a couple times, I think this is the last time. So I'm gonna hit Y, and there we go. So now before we go ahead and install stuff, let's go ahead and update our key ring. So let's select this, yes, there we go. And now we are good to move on. So you could do some more stuff in here, such as edit your mirror list, edit your Pac-Man config, whatever you really want, but for now we are good to go. One thing I'll do first is go ahead and upgrade with Yay. So let's hit enter there and make sure that there's nothing to do, which there is not. So from here, we can go over to back and now let's install. So here is where we are going to install some of our primary system components, starting with console. So from here, you could basically select what you want, but I'm gonna run through and select the things that I prefer, just so you can kind of work on that. So going into generic, we have nano. I'm actually gonna deselect Vim because I never use it. Uh, we want the base devil bash, uh, we want that. Uh, do make sure you install the base devil packages no matter what, that's very important. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and grab NeoFetch here because why not? And do make sure you have the Linux firmware here. We should already have it, but go ahead and select it there just to make sure. So for me, this should be pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the enter key to select this. Let's go with yes, and it's gonna download and install all the packages that we went ahead and selected. Skip any that we've already had and let's continue. Next we have compression tools. Let's go ahead and select everything here. We want the uh, zip, unzip, unrar, all that fun stuff. So proceed with installation, continue. Now we have some network tools. Now for me, the default options are completely fine. I don't really need any of these other tools quite yet. And with anything that you're going through right now, you could always install later. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter, proceed with the installation, continue and move on to our web browser. Now this is console web browser and I actually don't want any of these. So I could go ahead, let's hit enter to get out of there. Uh, we have recovery tools. So I don't really want any of these either. So let's go ahead and get out of there and then go over to OK, hit enter. So that's about it for console stuff. So let's go back out of here and go over to system tools. So here is the kernel. We already selected this during install, so we should be good to go, but I'm gonna go ahead and enter, make sure that these are selected. I do not need the documentation. Hit enter and make sure that 
we have everything that we need. So you can see we basically did already have anything. We were really only missing two packages. So from here, we could continue out of there. And let's go ahead and go back. Let's go over to services and make sure we have everything we want selected. Open SSH is very important for what I'm going to be doing, so make sure that's selected. And here, this is also very important depending on what kind of computer you have or what type of processor and chipset. So for example, if you're doing this on a Intel machine, you'd want to deselect AMD and select Intel, again, using the spacebar. But this actually is an AMD machine, so I'm gonna make sure AMD is selected. And from here, we are good to go. So let's hit enter, select yes, and it's gonna go ahead and grab all those files and packages. So now let's continue out of there. And it's asking us if we want to enable Network Manager on boot. Let's go ahead and do yes. And this is just another example of why I really like this script. That would have been uh, quite, quite a few different commands here that was just executed to be able to do that. And we just saved all that time. So any key to continue. And now since we did install Network Manager, we're gonna go ahead and disable this service. Continue, uh, start SSH server. Yes, we want to do that. So let's enable that. Now it's asking us if we want to enable Cronion boot. And again, the reason why it's asking all this is because we went ahead and installed all these packages that are generally ran when your system is booted up. So this is just going ahead and setting it up for you. So we're gonna select yes. And now we have an option to enable the NumLock service. So yes, and let's go ahead and start that up at boot, continue. So start have GD, so let's go yes, enter. Now start Bluetooth service at boot. Uh, for me, I'm actually gonna say no. Uh, if you do want your Bluetooth service enabled, hit yes, but this is gonna be a server and I'm never gonna use Bluetooth. So for me, I'm gonna select no. So now we're gonna go ahead and go down to file system. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and um, this actually looks pretty good. If you want to add a couple more packages from here that you're used to using, you could go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm gonna select OS Prober because that's good if you want to like dual boot and I might, but Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it deselected because I know for sure I'm not gonna be multi-booting on this machine, but if you do plan on dual booting any operating systems with your Arch install, I would highly suggest you go ahead and install OS Prober. But for me, nah, I'm gonna keep everything at default, hit enter and proceed with the installation and then press any key to continue. And now we're gonna go over to sound. Here's where you install Pulse Audio and all that fun stuff. Uh, the only thing I'm gonna do here is disable the Bluetooth option because I won't be using that, but for you, the defaults should be okay. And if you're ever looking at any of these packages and you're wondering specifically what it is, you can just search it in the Arch Wiki and it will tell you exactly what the package is, what it does, how to use it, all that fun stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter, continue with the installation, and then press any key to continue. From here, we're gonna go over to Print Support. I technically don't need print support for this, but some I might want to for something eventually. So Cups is the service that Arch uses for print support. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep the defaults, hit enter and proceed with the installation. Wait for this to go ahead and grab everything and then press any key to continue. Next, we're gonna it's gonna ask us if we want to go ahead and start Cups services on boot. And for you, you want to hit yes. For me, I'm gonna go with no because of my use case for the device that I'm installing this on. And from here, we could go ahead and go back. Next is gonna be Xorg. This is our actual display manager. This is very important. So let's go ahead and select that. So with the first option, we could actually see what type of graphics card we're running. So I am running a AMD graphics card. It's the uh, internal Vega series graphics mobile series. So being that it's AMD, I shouldn't have really any issue. So let's continue. But from here, we're gonna to want to go ahead, go down to install. And we have two options selected by default. I'm gonna go ahead, go through and actually select just about everything. Now selecting everything isn't necessary, but there are some good tools to be able to have on your system, just in case if you need them, such as Xkill is pretty good at closing applications that are giving you issues. Uh, if we go down to XRNR, that's really good for setting display resolutions. There's a lot of good stuff here, but definitely things that you do not need. So if you do want to, you can go ahead and go through all this and figure out exactly what you do need. Everything here is fairly lightweight, so going ahead and installing all of it is not that big of a deal. Let's go ahead and hit yes and proceed with the installation. So now any key to continue. Next, we're gonna go ahead and go to fonts. Default, just go ahead and make sure they're all selected. Okay, install them all. So now if we go ahead and go down to TTF, we have a lot more fonts to choose from. Uh, out of all of these, probably one of the more important ones that you're gonna want is the TTF MS fonts. This will make it compatible with any like Microsoft documents so you'll actually be able to open them. 
and you don't get a whole bunch of squares, but honestly, I'll just go ahead, select everything and install all of them. So now with everything selected, we're gonna go ahead and hit enter. And one thing we can see here is the TTF nerd font symbols and mono are in conflict. And let's go ahead and get all these from the AUR real quick. Uh, select none, enter. There we go, so I went ahead and pulled all the fonts that could from the AUR. Since we did have a conflict, I'm just gonna go in here and make sure that it actually installed all this. So I'm gonna select all this again. And the conflict was right here, so I'm gonna deselect this mono one, hit enter. And from here, I'm gonna proceed with the installation. Now you can see the total download size is 1.5 gigabytes. You definitely don't need to select all these fonts, but I'm gonna go ahead and proceed. All right, so it grabbed all those packages. Let's press any key to continue. Now we already have this, so it might skip it for us. So let's go N, N, and yeah, it went ahead and skipped everything because we already have that. So now we could go ahead and go back, go over to our input drivers. And from here, I'm gonna go ahead and just keep the default selected. There's nothing to do because we already have it. So from here, we could go ahead and go over to video drivers. Now here is where we're gonna select open source or proprietary. This is basically AMD or NVIDIA. So for me, it's open source, and then I would just go ahead and select the AMD GPU. If you did have a NVIDIA, you'd want to go back over here and then select the NVIDIA drivers here. But I have an AMD, so I could go ahead and go to open source, make sure my AMD GPU is selected. Additionally, if you're using like an Intel integrated graphics, you go ahead and select this one right here. But from here, I'm going to go ahead and enter, proceed with the installation, and continue and now I have those video drivers. So let's go ahead and go back, back, and now is when we're gonna have a little bit of fun. Let's go ahead and select our desktop environment. So for this install, I'm looking for something fairly lightweight. I'm probably either gonna go with LXQT or XFCE. Uh, I'm more familiar with XFCE, so let's go ahead and select this. Obviously, I could easily change this down the road if I would like to. So depending on the actual desktop environment you select, you're gonna have different options. But for XFCE, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure everything is selected, install all these packages, and when it's done, continue. Now I can get some of the goodies. You can see everything's automatically selected. Hit enter, grab all these packages, and then we are good to go. We have some compliments here, so you go ahead and install these if you'd like to. Here is where I have like my light DM GTK greeter and a couple other things. So I'm gonna go ahead and download all these continue with the installation, and then continue. So now that we want to start light DM service on boot, this is what's actually gonna be our login screen that allows us to get into our desktop environment. So yes, we definitely want to enable that. And then from here, we could go ahead and go back. If you want to install more desktop environments, you could go ahead and do that now. For example, if I wanted Plasma, you can see I have my Plasma packages, KDE applications. You have all different categories and stuff through KDE. KDE's is just as light, but it's definitely a more complete set of packages. So I'm just gonna go ahead and back out of here, back out of here, and now we have our display manager. Now you saw we actually already enabled our light DM greeter. When you install your desktop environment, it's probably going to go ahead and install one of these by default. When you do install your desktop environment, if you don't get a thing that pops up to actually enable the service like you saw with LightDM Greeter when I installed XFCE, make sure you go ahead and get yourself a display manager. And you can see here like GDM comes with GNOME, SDDM comes with any of the QT stuff, so LXQT or KDE Plasma. This comes with LXDE and this came with XFCE. So I don't need this because I already have it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back. And here we have applications. Now you could completely skip this, but we might as well go ahead and go through and grab some extra things while we're in here. So I'm gonna go to Office Suites and here we have an option for LibreOffice. I'm gonna go ahead and grab LibreOffice Fresh. So we go ahead and select that, continue with the installation. There we go, so now I have an Office Suite. Now these are additional language packages. I, Unless if uh, English is an option, I don't really need any of them. Uh, English, Great Britain, I'll select that just in case if it doesn't come with one. So let's go ahead and enter, yes, and continue. And now I'm pretty sure I don't need anything else. If we go under Office, we have a calculator application. Uh, I don't really want that one, so let's go ahead and back out of here. Under internet, we have options for our web browser. For here, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab Firefox, and uh, I think that should be good. So let's hit enter, install Firefox, and then continue out of here. Next, we have torrent and email clients. 
Uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead and actually, actually, no, no, no. Let's go ahead and get K Torrent. K Torrent's one of the better ones in my opinion. So from here, let's continue. So that, because this is a media server, so I might want to do torrents directly to it. Free and open source torrents, of course. There we go. So let's continue out of there. Uh, I'm not going to need any email clients on this, so we'll go back. Multimedia, we have GStreamer, we have audio, video players, video tools, burner tools. So I'm pretty sure I'm not going to need any of these, but we will go ahead and grab these uh, GStreamer tools. So let's go ahead and continue with the installation. Continue, and then go ahead and back out of here. If you go under graphic, you have like GIMP, Inkscape, and all that fun stuff. I'm not going to need any of that. Under dev, we have some more tools. So you have Notepad QQ, which I would recommend if you're looking for a Notepad++ alternative. And then we have Genie VS Code. I'm not going to need any of this. Under system, we have some tools. Let's see if I need any of this. We have Gparted. Um, actually, let's go ahead and grab Gparted. Uh, keep pass, VirtualBox stuff, Wine stuff, uh, Conkey. So basically, Gparted is the only thing I'd want out of there for now. And continue. And now we have Pac-Man GUI. I like Pac-Man in the terminal, so we're just going to go ahead and back out of here. And then if I go ahead and go back, the last option is to config. So let's go ahead and go in here. First we have bash. So you go through and mess with your bash configuration if you'd like to. For me, the defaults are going to be good. Right here you have firewall stuff. So if you want to, you could go in and change your rules and all that. But I'm going to go ahead and back out. If we go down to accounts, this one's pretty important. What we're going to do is go ahead and add a new user. So I'm going to add a user and the name of the user is going to be my name. So Brandon. Okay. And then I'm going to give myself a password. I'm going to go ahead and do the same password as my root. There we go. Continue. And you can list users just to make sure it's in there. You can see I have Brandon. So I'm going to go ahead and back out of here and I'm going to go to sudoers add a sudoer and add Brandon as a sudoer. And you can see all that did was edit the ECT sudoers file. So from here, I could go ahead and go to OK. Actually, no, let's go ahead and back out of here, back out of here. So now we went ahead and created our account. So that is what we're going to use to log in. So that is really about it that we're going to mess with in this menu. We could go ahead and edit some more things here. Uh, boot, for example, you could go and edit your grub config, but that's everything we really need to do in there. So we could go ahead, back, exit out of this script. And now we are in our main script. So from here, we actually want to go ahead and go back. And then in this install menu, we're going to go ahead and unmount our partitions, continue. And then we should be able to go back again and reboot our system. So we'll select reboot, hit enter, reboot, yes, and it's gonna go ahead and reboot our system. All right, so let's go ahead and select Arch Linux, and it's loading the kernel, starting up, and everything should work just fine, theoretically, which it looks like it is. We have our login screen here, so I should just be able to type in my password and get into our Arch Linux. There we go. So now if you do so remember, we went ahead, well first let's make this display a little better. So one of the things that uh, we talked about earlier was XR and R. So here are all my available display resolutions. So what I'm gonna do is go XR and R dash S and set this to 1920 by 1080. Hit enter and there we go, that's looking a little bit better. Since we have a terminal window open here, we could go ahead and type in NeoFetch just to make sure we are rocking and rolling on Arch Linux. So technically, other than checking for the internet, that is how you install Arch Linux, only needing to type in two commands. Granted, you still need to select and do everything, but it is through a nice little graphical user interface. So do thank you so much for watching. Like I said, there will be a post on techcut.tv featuring this video with some extra tips and tricks that you may want to look into. Please go ahead and check out my content over on Odyssey. Everything's synced up over there. And that is, in my opinion, a superior video platform. With all that said, please like this video if you did. Subscribe, ring that bell so you do not miss any future uploads. I hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.